and bothered or unbothered. But in the end, we can agree that transition bring about a layer of emotion that leave us feeling exposed and indefinitely changed. Today, 
is coming to these United States of America. Um, I, I come from a humble setting in Costa Rica um, where we, uh, we ate home cooked foods every day. <laughs> We didn't go to restaurants. We didn't order food in. Yeah. We cooked right. every day. Yeah. And um, <clears throat> we went to school through high school in uniforms yeah. that, yeah, we, yeah, that we were very that. proud yeah. of. Um, uh, each high school had its own combination of colors. So you could be identified on the streets oh. by by your oh, uniform. So we were proud in that and, and, yeah. and we wanted the school to, to stand out. So um, at age 18, when I found myself on Laxa Airlines <laughs> coming to the United States, um, that was a big transition for me. Mm -hmm. I'm coming from a real humble setting and I'm coming to these United States that I have read and heard so much. Mm. Uh, of course, when they brought me that tray of food um, with the little cutout with the shape of the chicken leg <laughs> and another little square for uh, another item and a little circle. This is, for, this is on the plate. On the plate. This is on the plate. Oh, okay, okay. okay. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I, have, I thought I had arrived. <laughs> you know, to be served, this fancy little tray was a big transition to me. Mm -hmm. But in my mind, it was just a sign of the greater things to come by living in the United States. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, I get here and, and there was snow. I had never seen snow. This was my first flight in life, by the way. And so I thought that I was going to stay at the top of this mountain. Uh, throughout my life here in the United States. I, I thought that I would just be going from the top of one mountain to the top of another. And please excuse my hands. I'm, I'm just Hispanic by nature. And, 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 I get it. Okay. 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 I wanted to, to register in college because I had done my first year in Costa Rica. And the administrators of the college didn't think that my English was good enough for a chemistry major. And so they made me take a year and a half of non-credit English courses. Wow. In those days, they, they, they did wow. that in those days. Oh. So a year and a half of torture for me this was a big drop not a mountain no more mountains no more mountains you know right i get uh, no credit i fell down uh, to the valley yeah. right, uh, from that mountain uh, uh, it was a big disappointment for me yeah. um so what did i do i abandoned my spanish-speaking friends the novellas in spanish you know the soap operas oh, yeah. um no more spanish magazines tv <laughs> I abandoned my natal mm -hmm. culture mm -hmm. because I had a goal that I wanted to reach. Yeah. And lo and behold, um, I did get my degree in chemistry a few <laughs> years later. Yes. So that was like a big transition mm -hmm. from Costa Rica to Brooklyn um, and, and just having that setback. Mm -hmm. But what did I learn from it? that um and i didn't know this at that time but the lord has a plan for yes. each and every yes. one of us yes. and it's yes. a plan to prosper us yes. Yes. it's a plan not to harm yes. uh and amen so t today i can i can really rejoice mm -hmm. in having learned yeah. that uh he had a plan and yes. he had a plan until today for each and every one of us it worked. Yeah, it was worked. Wow. 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 Wow.
answered prayer. Like my sister and I, we both moved into an apartment together. And so we were definitely an answered prayer. Um, and like, you know, what I used to live with, my mom and I used to live together. And my sister and my mom and I lived together in an apartment. And yeah, my mom would cook, you know, like she was all the time, like, you know, here and there. And I would cook too, but you know, it wasn't so much like always depending on me. Um, and now I'm on my own. <laughs> and I'm like, that transition to like, Paying your own bill, paying your rent, yes. be responsible for yourself. Yes. Like it definitely hit harder than I thought it would. Um, mm. Even though I lived with my sister, like I felt very lonely. I felt like I was in over my head. Mm. Um, I felt like I didn't know what I was doing. Um, so that's been the that's been a really rough transition for me. Mm. But I think it was needed because, like, I definitely see myself like really thinking more about, okay, what do you want in your life? What do you want for yourself? Like, yes, what is your future going to yes. look like? Because I think, like, that move to moving on your own, you know, like, it, it, especially in New York City, I feel like it's, like, you know, in New York City, it's probably less likely that people are moving out on their own. Like, a lot of people are staying with their parents. A lot of millennials, I would say, are <laughs> staying with their parents. So, like, even the fact, like, like I said, this apartment was an answer prayer. So, um, like transitioning to that, you know, like going through, I was going through depression, a lot of anxiety, mm -hmm. um, and just like certain things that I didn't realize that I was still grieving, like the loss mm -hmm. of my father, like that really hit me really hard this year than it did any other year. Mm -hmm. So I was like, why is this happening now? Like, yeah, my dad died three years ago. Like, why is all of this mm -hmm. happening now? And like, you know, I found myself even distancing myself from God um, in all of this. But like, I feel like now I'm on the other side of it, um, mm -hmm. I definitely realized, like, like, this is a time where I can actually say, like, I feel the change in myself, yeah. you know? I'm in therapy as well, and I'm, even though I'm a therapist, I'm in therapy, you yeah. know? Like, mm -hmm. and um, I'm seeking the help that I need. Yeah. 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 Um, and it's definitely been, like, eye-opening. Like, I found myself getting closer to God. Like, at one point, I wasn't even reading my Bible, and now I'm trying to really open and understand so that even though my heart feels hard, at times when I'm reading it, like, I'm just trying to, like, I need something, you yes. know? Yeah. I need to hang on to his word and still worship for before. And then, like, having people and mentors in my life, like Sarah, yeah. um, mm -hmm. like, who? Yes, Sarah. Yeah. <laughs> she, she puts me in my place. <laughs> <laughs> Some of the 
transitions that I was going through that my body changes. Yeah, 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 and, yeah. Uh, and they would ask, hasn't the menopause come yet? I said, no, it hasn't. <laughs> oh, it's on its way. <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea what I'm doing. It's like a plane. <laughs> and, 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 and perimenopause can last a long, long time. time. Oh, a long yes. time. Oh. <laughs> and, but, but for me also, in that transition, in my perimenopause and as I got into menopause, is the brain fog. Mm -hmm. okay. yeah. that's the one that gets me and now mm -hmm. I, i'm writing things down yeah. yeah i was so confident and i can remember stuff and everything but now i'm like what was it okay. i'm trying to remember and it's here like yeah. yeah. it yeah. seemed to come out yeah, yeah. 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 and yeah. so i think that in itself i have to be i find i have to be kind to myself i go it's mm -hmm. okay yeah. Yeah. you're going through a normal thing it's not a health issue mm -hmm. it's yeah. the perimenopause or intermenopause and i think yeah. that uh, the other thing that i'm noticing is i'm becoming more and more sensitive mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. i find that I'm, I'm i'm hurting when i hurt i hurt deeper mm -hmm. and things i feel things more and sometimes i can't even uh, be able to sort out my feelings. It takes right. me longer mm -hmm. to identify my feelings. Mm -hmm. And obviously my body is changing. Oh, the video. Like <laughs> <Yes>. ice, <laughs> that eyes me. And I'm like, okay, oh, yeah, yeah. times I'm like, is this, is it me or what? <laughs> and we were laughing with a friend. She's saying it's my personal summer. Yeah. <laughs> I like that. That's a nice way to know It's my personal <laughs> summer. <laughs> But also, I, I think what I'm praying on is to not allow this moment and this time for it to be a negative, bad right. experience. Right. 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 That right. God has given me the Holy Spirit. He's given me that ability to be able to have self-control. Yes. And, and not to wreck my relationships because my mm -hmm. body is changing. Yeah. And even as I start to identify, okay, this is the new me. Okay, I'm learning me. And, and, and that's my transition mm -hmm. of being able to just go, okay, I'm feeling this thing. Mm -hmm. is, are they actual or is it real? Mm -hmm. And I find that when I'm able to sort that out, mm -hmm. at some level of maturity, yes, mm -hmm. I'm yeah. gaining some level of maturity. So this is my transition that I'm going through. Wonderful. I'm learning some stuff. I'm learning some stuff, Sarah. When I get there. Yeah. yeah. You know, you it know? sounds a lot like what I'm going through. As you're speaking, I'm like, okay, I'm seeing myself. Like, I walk into a room and I'm like, what? what did I need to get in here? What did I come in here for? What did I, come in here for? <laughs> I open the cupboard and I'm like, yeah. What am I in here for? Uh -huh. And so, you know, I think that's just also, I'm like slowly moving into that transition. We're the same oh, yeah, age. Exactly. So, exactly. I feel so, like we're, I feel we're, like, we're all in the boat together. But one thing that, you know, having four daughters mm -hmm. that, you know, one is 21, my oldest, and then, you know, the triplets are 18 now. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. I think the biggest transition I'm going through right now is learning how to let go. Because I think for their whole lives, you know, having them, they were born premature, and many of you literally had your hand on them. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, I remember them coming in with their little carriers and, you know, many of you feeding yeah. them. Uh -huh. and, and now it's like to see them driving and going off to college. I don't know. I feel like I'm, it's like you want that, you know, you want that for your kids. Yeah. <laughs> That's going to be you soon. <laughs> <laughs> you're on the road <laughs> i feel like you know um you want that you want the kids to you know get up and grow yes. and go eventually yes. but i feel like even though i was there every day helping them and you know moving them along now that they're walking through the door i'm so scared you know i'm so scared and yeah, i'm so that's... like i'm just so fearful so yeah. i'm learning how to let go and let that I'm Amen. learning how to just surrender and say, God, you love these kids more than I do. Mm -hmm. And you know, chapter 18, chapter 19, yeah. chapter 25, yeah. 37, yeah. you know, you know that they're what their ages will be. And yeah. so I'm learning how to just um, let them grow and really let them go. Mm -hmm. And that's hard. Like, I'm still yeah. there. I'm still there. Like, I'm learning how to be their friend. You know, I'm learning how to listen a lot more yes. because you know, I, it's like, that's the transition. I mean, I'm going from being like the mother, mother, mother on top, like almost helicopter mom yeah, wow. to scaling it back a thousand yeah. and letting them, you know, learn how to make their own decisions. Yeah. Even if they fall, 
even if I knew that that wasn't going to work, but let them do it and not have it to get in front of it, you know, yes. but it's so scary. And at the same time, I'm grieving it, but I wanted it, but I'm grieving it, but I wanted it. Yes. I'm like, is this a weird thing? thing? Yeah. Yeah. Oh. It's like a weird thing. Yeah. At the same time, yeah. I heard this thing where it's like, and it really helps my heart, where it's not so much that life is ups and downs, that you can have, it's almost like two trains riding together. Like you can have an up and a down at the same time, you know? Yeah. And I never thought of life that way, yeah. Yeah. Um, but that helps me yeah. because yeah. it's true. Yeah. Like we can have something that's negative going on and something that's positive yeah. going that's so on true. or the way we view it, you know? Yeah. Um, a sad emotion, but then a happy emotion. Yeah. Um, and that's okay. Yeah. And not feel like you're crazy. Exactly. Yeah. exactly. I don't know if I'm there yet. I still feel like I'm crazy. <laughs> Yeah. Well, you have to trust God. 
I mean, mean help us from situations where you gut level have no choice but to talk. Yeah. yeah. It's funny because I'm in that little bit of younger, you know, my daughter's a little bit younger and um so she's fifteen, she'll be sixteen in January. You know, I'm the one in the car now, right? She passed the little Britain thing. And she's like, Mommy, can I drive up the driveway? And I'm like, Oh my gosh. <laughs> she gets in the car and we switch seats and I'm like, don't hold the car yet. Fix the mirrors, fix the, you know, and I'm showing her everything, put your foot on the gas. I go, put your foot on the gas and put your foot on the brake, like just to get your and then I noticed that this child that she put her left foot on the on the brake. And I'm like, no, honey, we, we drive with one foot. <laughs> At that moment, I was like, we're going to go through like the retaining wall in the back of my house. I'm like, no, no, God, I trust you. But I think for me, it's because she's still with me. And um, I, my prayer all the time now is like how much to um, give her that rope. You know, I want to go here. You know, we're talking about things like, we're talking about like dating. Mm -hmm. you know. We're talking about like the clothes, the shopping, the going out yeah. with the friends, yeah. and who you're hanging out with, mm -hmm. and this and that, and, you know, so I can, and I remember what it was like mm -hmm. for me, mm -hmm. but I feel like it's different. But anyway, I think, um, yeah, I think it's going to be great. I really appreciate everything that you guys shared. Someone mentioned their friends. I think a couple of people did about friendships and mm -hmm. and having that input. And um, maybe we'll talk a little bit about that. Like, what do you guys, how do you feel about, like, especially through this pandemic and through some of these transitions, mm -hmm. what do you feel like has been, in as far as friends and advice or listening, like, what has been the most helpful uh, to you? Um, during this time or during your time of tra transition? Um, for me, uh, having women to reach out to that were actually wise. Mm -hmm. um, you know, when you need direction, you want to speak to somebody who can help you. A lot of times we can pick the wrong people to, mm -hmm. to get advice from. Mm -hmm. I've been really lucky, very blessed that, that mm -hmm. the women that I reach out to when I'm in crisis. Mm. These women are experienced. Um, they're very uh, down to earth and they're solid, strong character women with integrity. Mm -hmm. That's a lot I just said. Mm -hmm. So I don't just go to anybody. Right. And these people are able to give me direction mm -hmm. yes. when I'm in crisis, when I'm in a situation. And these women love God. These women love God and they trust his word. And so I've been really blessed that when I was going through a lot of this stuff, like I just said, Stone was away, pandemic, four times they shut down Paris. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, I was talking to solid women yeah. mm -hmm. that helped me, that gave me direction and mm -hmm. scriptures that I could, you know, go back over and look at what they were there to listen. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, it's really key for women that you pick the right people, have a network of strong character people. Does that mean that all my friends are, are, are mountains and strong? And no, I have all kinds of friends from all, but when I'm in crisis, you know, when my child is in danger, when I have a situation, I need somebody strong. Yes. Yes. And I feel so blessed that, I, that, that I'm a part of, of God's, you know, I'm a part of a group of women. Mm -hmm. That yeah, really that's gives awesome. me some some help yeah. when I really need it, mm -hmm. and, and it has helped me during the, uh, the pandemic. Mm -hmm. Those kind of friendships have helped. Wow. Wow. As you were wow. saying that, uh, Demaris, I thought, you know, we're not meant to be an army, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and and the isolation in the pandemic, mm -hmm. it's forced us literally, physically, and psychologically, mentally, everything. To just separate from people, but I'm so grateful for phone calls, mm -hmm. for Zoom, yeah. for technology. Yes. Yeah. But how how we need people. Yeah. yeah. And uh, I was thinking that friends, we move in this pandemic, we moved houses and changed jobs. And those are several factors that just are so stressful. Mm -hmm. And on top of that, it's the pandemic. But we spent some time with some close friends of ours. And uh, she met me. 
and she understood all my is it is, is, is the thumb stuck? Where is it? Is it working? Uh, but also how I needed how calm mm -hmm. and friends whom I could imitate and who could tether me and say it's okay. There's so much that you're going through. Just sit by the pool, fall asleep, and just rest and spend that time with God as much time as you need. And I think I needed that. Mm -hmm. Aside from those friends, but friends who I don't have to be strong all the time. Yes. And who yeah. And can just hug me yeah. and I can just be a puddle. Yeah. But that in itself also strengthens me. Mm -hmm. uh, but one thing I just just knowing and recognizing we're not meant to be an island. Right. No, mm -hmm. and, and having those friends who call and say, Sarah, are you okay? Yeah. Do you need anything? And like what you were saying, I'm you're learning to say, I need this and that and that. I'm not that yet there. Yeah. I'm not always in touch of thinking, well, this is what I need. Mm -hmm. You know, friends, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. Is that, is that me? And I have to share about that because during the pandemic, I live alone, right? So I was okay. You know, I love being alone. It was all right. But after a couple of months, I just felt the isolation. Mm -hmm. yes. And I just felt like, hey, I can't do this, right? I don't have anybody around. I'm coming home by myself. I'm locked in by myself. It's just me alone. And I got tired of Zoom, I'll be honest. Mm -hmm. Got tired of Zoom. Got tired of text. Yeah. Got tired of phone calls. I was not doing it. Yeah. So I had reached out to someone, another um, sister in the Manhattan region. She was always going out doing stuff. I yeah. need to get out. And I need to be with people yeah. because that's part of my personality. Yeah. You know, I'm always outgoing and stuff like that. And we created this, this group of us to this day. It's five, six of us. And we yeah. get together once a month oh. and we go out and we do something. Mm. Like, you know, we pray. Like, you know what, God, we got we to do this. You know, we had a mask on. We did our testing. And it was just the five of us. Every month we got together and we all were in the same boat. And not just sisters. It was brothers, that's too. Right, yeah. You know, we got together. We all felt isolated. We all felt lonely. Mm -hmm. We all felt that we couldn't deal with this thing in our home all the time and not have anyone to really talk to. Mm -hmm. So we, we, because of that necessity and that common thread between us, we got together every month and we go out and we do things and we still have it going on yeah. even now. I know. So it's an amazing time. I see you guys. Yeah. 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 And um, if I can say that's a celebration of being single. Yeah. And just what you just shared about this group of single people mm -hmm. and what they're doing and how radiant you are. Yes. And full yes. of energy and just really creativity. Yes. All of you have embraced being single mm -hmm. and that is one of the transitions that i wanted to share because i'm going from being married to single mm -hmm. and i just want to be vulnerable and share with women you know um the society that we come out of from from little girls they teach us that we are princesses that are going to marry a prince or a king mm -hmm. from tiny tots we're taught and exposed to this idea that we're incomplete until we barbies with Ken or um, whatever the case is. Right. And I just feel like we need to embrace the reality like Sonia shared. That may not be our story. Mm -hmm. And we have this wonderful life um, in front of us to enjoy. And I might be 56 years old, so the truth of the matter is... is right? You have to love what God has given you to hear what it is yeah. and yeah. share exactly. what God has given you. I, I'm sitting here sharing this because I know there's women that have just broken up with someone. I know there are women who have just divorced with someone. And you may feel like your life is over or you feel broken and it is real. I'm not saying that you're not going to take time to heal. What I'm telling you is life, the life that God has given you is today. So take yes. each day yes. and enjoy it. Yes. Find out more about yourself. Get deep into who you are and then share that with other people because that's my my attitude mm -hmm. i had to learn to be single mm -hmm. i had to learn how to change the way i thought yeah. 
pure. Mm -hmm. I had to learn and I had to teach my body that yeah. we could be real. So I had to retrain yeah. myself. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, because now I'm single again. Mm -hmm. wow. And to respect and honor God. That wasn't easy because mm -hmm. I was married for almost 12 years. Right. Mm -hmm. However, with God, all things are possible. That's true. And I'm happy to be single. Amen. I'm Amen. happy that yep. certain parts of me are shut down. I don't want it to be open and alive and bothering me. I'm happy. Amen. I'm happy. Amen. And I want women to feel happy about being single. Yes. There's freedom mm -hmm. in being single. It's not a curse. It's right? not. Right? There's no. freedom. It's freedom. I am right. drama free. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have to deal with certain things. Drama free, girl. My energy is not entrenched in that. Yeah. Yeah. And so you have to understand that God placed you in the position that you're in right now. Because he knows best. Right. 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 Enjoy it. Yeah. yeah. I love that. And That's you know, uh, even as you're saying, learning about yourself. Mm -hmm within that transition yes. and every moment it's a learning curve mm -hmm. and that ability to be able to sift through and learn but i think even greater in that is that we're made in god's image mm -hmm. and i think when we listen to that bombardment of the world yeah. like what you're saying the body yeah. the hollywood the movies Moment, you're everything. thinking of happy ever after commercial right. it, it drowns up what god is saying right and you, you start know. to believe yeah. that exactly. yeah. 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 God, what he said. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 You know, as single woman, we have to come to act that. Come yes. on. You know, it's hard, you know, with this being your word, being open, right? Being honest. Yeah. Like, like I said, I'm honest. Yeah, yeah. I still want to be a wife in the mall. It may not happen. Yeah. The society is there, right? Yeah. We talked about yeah. that. Yeah. I want to be right? married. Exactly. Day. We yeah. talked about that. There's the struggle there, but at the same time, you gotta understand I got one life to live. Yes. Right. And this is where God has me. And what am I gonna do? You have a choice. We all got a choice to make. What am I going to do? Be sad, be depressed, be disappointed, stay in the house. Or oh, I'm going to live this life the best way that I can. There's yeah. so many things out there. Yeah. You know? Yeah. After yeah. you're 30, 40, 50, 60, 20. you know, 20s, yeah. you know, live your life. Yeah. No, don't focus. Oh my God, I got to be married. I got to have kids. There's so many beautiful things out in life, you know, and right. who knows? God can just like, just like that, out of the blue yes. and bless you. Yeah. You know? I think, like, I'm loving hearing what y'all say. No, I enjoy it because it's like, I need it. Yeah, um, yeah. I need to hear it. Like, I'm like I'm 28. No, I'm not 28. I'm 27. Like, I'm turning 28 in January. But I'm 27, and, like, you know, I'm single. Mm -hmm. And, um, like, it's just, like, the friendship part. I want to start with that because, like, mm -hmm. I value my friendships mm -hmm. i thank god for my friendships because even when i was going through that depression just like seeing people like checking in on me and all of that mm -hmm. like and part of that depression was like understanding my sing singleness yeah you know mm -hmm. part of it like not not just like the, the transition but it was just like a lot of it's a culmination of things right mm -hmm. and like struggle with my um identity struggling like with my the way i view myself physically mm -hmm. um and like I think that like my friendships, like I went to Texas recently to see my friend, hope like who I went to college with, who was a disciple, and um, just the way she bigs me up, you know, yeah. like her presence is warm to me, you know. Yeah. The friendships I have here in Brooklyn, like brothers and sisters, yeah. um, one of them is here filming us right now. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
love myself as much as I do now. Mm -hmm. You know, and and I'm not saying I completely love it. It's still a journey, mm -hmm. but like the people in my life definitely help me and ground me. Mm -hmm. You know, like you know that tell me like no Tylo like. You're a catch. Like people, yeah. like, like, you know, when people yeah. say that, I'm like, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Um, yeah. Right. so, like, you know, that's helpful for me because yeah. it's definitely a struggle. Like, you know, like, of course, I want to be married one day, you know, yeah. like, I want to be in that position, but, you know, I am trying to, like, enjoy my singleness, you know, and I think that the way we do that is through our friendships. Like, yeah. we need to have people in our lives. We can't yes. do this alone yeah. Yeah. because then, like, the yeah. world is so, can be so, like, um, what's the word? Like it, attractive. Yeah. When, lore, yeah, it, it, it can lure you in and yeah. mislead you. Yeah. 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 It, it, that, it's misleading. Yeah. Like, yes, you know, is. and like, you know, we have social media now yeah. and there's all the comparison traps. Yeah. Like when you were talking about like how like they took like how the world can define romance for yeah. you. Yeah. And how like you can look at watch all these rom coms yeah. and think, oh, like why don't I have this? You know, yeah. and like even the way it goes about, you know, like you start trying to, you know, imagining things like how it could be that way. And, you know, I'm learning just like, you know, like I can't allow the world to define love for me. Yeah. 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 So like, I just try to like, what I have is use the love that I have for the friendships that I have, yeah. you right. know, and just try to enjoy myself as much as possible, yeah. travel, mm -hmm. hang out with people, you know, go on adventures and stuff yeah. like that. So that's just been kind of like, grounding wow. me now but like yeah. I've definitely it's been, it's been a like I said this year has definitely been a process yeah. so yeah. Yeah. I'm definitely yeah. still learning yeah. 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 and so yeah. often yeah. Yeah, I'm sure. and, and so often um in watching tv and being lured by it um like someone said before yes we we want that because we think that that is what happiness is yeah. and uh but here lately we have also been learning through tv that um all these movie stars and these celebrities that you see waking up with the makeup perfectly on and with the gorgeous uh uh sleeping gowns and so that they're not really happy that's right mm -hmm. uh, but for some reason that part of tv does not influence our desires mm -hmm. we have a tendency of going for the other thing that is an absolute lie mm -hmm. and these during these past two years the pandemic has helped me a lot to deepen my friendships mm -hmm. um for one thing it allowed me to to be to get closer the Latin ministry. Mm -hmm. Y para mis hermanas que están escuchando Exacto. las hispanohablantes, sí. bienvenidas. Sí. Espero que algo les saquen uh -huh. a, a esta conversación, a todos uh -huh. estos relatos. Bienvenidas, las quiero mucho. Uh -huh. Bienvenidas. Uh -huh. But I had a chance. <laughs> yeah. I had a chance to, to, to get deeper in with my Latin sisters. Amen. Why did that happen? Because we were no longer going to church That's right. in English, so to speak. Mm. That's right. um, I had always been advised to go to the English uh, services because your husband does not speak Spanish and you're best uh, staying with him mm -hmm. in the English. Mm. But I always wanted to, to, to be in all of the activities that the Latin ministry would be doing. First of all, I, 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 I love dancing salsa. And, and Yolanda was um, she a is. key person. <laughs> <laughs> I always felt like that. So, uh -huh. I always thought it was. It is. It is. Yolanda was instrumental in me uh, being where I am today mm -hmm. because I was a young disciple at the time. And when Yolanda would invite me to uh, a party, I was like, what? They have parties. Uh, <laughs> the church is like, what is this? The party started at six o'clock on a Saturday, which was a total transition for me. It, it was like, what? I'm used to leaving my house at eleven o'clock, maybe midnight, to go to a party. And here's Yolanda inviting me to a party, at, and I would get there, and these sisters and these brothers were having such a great time. Sodas. Kool-Aid, um, uh, apple juices, 
and so on and so forth. And the food oh, yeah. was just out of the world. Yeah. I knew then that I would be a disciple for a long time. <laughs> But the pandemic also taught me to, to, to enjoy Zoom. For me, it's 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 new. It's it's, it's a learning experience. And, and just to be able to sit in my house and talk to people and get close to people, uh, as opposed to just a phone call. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I could see so, them. Yeah. So for me, it's been a, it's been a good two years. I learned to uh, do introspective analysis on who I am. Someone gave me a cup once uh, for my birthday that said, do more of what makes you happy. Mm -hmm. And during these past two years, I've had a chance to figure out what is it that makes me happy? Wow. Because happiness is, is, is a definition that I think is different yeah. for each it one of us. Yeah. Um, but during this time, I've had a lot of ample time to figure out what is, it, what is it that makes me happy. So I have my coffee in this cup every morning yeah. Yeah. to remind myself yeah. to do more yeah. of what makes me happy. And what is it that makes me happy? Yeah. I love being in conversation with, with my, my brothers and sisters. Um, um, uh, I, I, I sometimes have to watch my, uh, what, my interrelations with, with the brothers because I'm not thinking this is a brother and this is a sister. I'm yeah. just thinking this is my family yeah. and, right, right. and I love yeah. it. Yeah. And, 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 you know, so, so for me, the past two years, the, this pandemic has been a good experience. It's, it's all, like when you were talking about like having brother and sister relationships, I like I always say I value the fact that I have brother relationships. Yeah. Yes. Because yes. like, like I can see like, I'm like, whoever steps to me, like, <laughs> they gonna not, like, yeah, I, I have yeah. an idea yeah, of, yeah, yeah. you know, like I can see characteristics in them that I can see. And not only just yeah. that, like I enjoy conversation and it's talking about different things. So I really value having brother relationships, mm -hmm. obviously there's going to be boundaries there, yeah, right? Sure. You know, cool. and you have to protect yourself yeah. and them, but like, yeah, like, I think it's important to have, yeah. like, I think God intended us. Yeah, we know? need each other, like, right? Like, exactly. I, I don't, when he said, like, it's not meant good for men to be alone, he wasn't just talking about mm -hmm. marriage. Right, you know? exactly. Right. Yeah, he was talking about having brother-sister relationships, yeah. and, yeah. and I think it's mm -hmm. so needed, and I think it's something that we can just learn more from. Exactly. You know, I was just thinking about how God is so kind yeah. and how he blesses us. This is true. You know, with the one another relationships, mm -hmm. you know, that it seems like that's such a common thread. Mm -hmm. And 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 he says, here, come together. You're my children, brothers and sisters, and, and just encourage one another. Mm -hmm. I like the way you say, you know, you like to be affirmed. Yeah, you know, and, and that is such a part of God's plan mm -hmm. where He says, My children have those one another relationships, yeah, and how those relationships are just so important mm -hmm. in, in, in our growth and grounding us, reminding us who we are in God's presence mm -hmm. and that we are made in His image. So, I really like that, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, and I think that's just very oh, yeah. Um, when you talk about the cup, do more things that make you happy. I just want to say that it's for me it's clear that my happiness doesn't come from somebody else. Right. My happiness right. does not I have to say it twice. It's not dependent on someone else. Right. Whether right. you yeah. have a husband, whether you have a fiance, boyfriend, your happiness does not depend mm. on another human being. Yeah. You have to learn how to love yourself. Yeah. And you mm -hmm. have to learn how to do the things that make you happy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then when you're in that happy state, and so I'm happy for you, my sister. <laughs> <laughs> similarities and in many ways we're kind of either going through similar transitions 
or we've gone through or we're going to go through mm -hmm. the transition. So I love what, what we've been talking about. And I really love what you talked about, Damaris, about the space. I think it's just, you know, enjoying where we are. You know, mm -hmm. as you mentioned, Ty will just enjoying the space where we are and really staying with God as close as we can, not letting go, because that's my thing. It's like, I'm not, I don't care where I go. I've been through a lot of transitions. I can relate to you, Damaris, in a huge way and many other ways. I'm still climbing my way as my daughters get older. But um, I think it's like, let's hold on to God no matter what. And whenever, whatever space we're in, just holding on to God. That's right. You know, I was just thinking, it somewhat also speaks of navigating change. How do we navigate change? Or how do we process change? And how do we navigate that? This is so true. I feel I'm a person who likes, I don't know, some people like this and some people are more like go with the flow, but I'm like a duck in a row. Yeah, <laughs> so much. Right? Yeah. I don't want sure. my duck. Because it gets out of the row, I start to have yeah. like, you know, anxiety. <laughs> but I, you know, life is not like that, right? Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. We can't control so many things that go on around mm -hmm. us. Mm -hmm. um, and that's hard for me. You know, I think that's hard for me. I think um, prayer is definitely um, my number one thing of, learn of, of asking God, like, God, there's things going on right now mm -hmm. that I feel are very out of control, but I know that you are in control. So that sovereignty, mm -hmm. that understanding of that God is in control of things, yeah. even when I don't feel like it, mm -hmm. um, that helps me in transition, especially um, when there's a few of them in a row. Mm -hmm. I mean, I feel like those types of things can take you out in, mm -hmm. in a way, you yeah. know, yeah. like um, sometimes I get robotic, like as I shut down, being able to, someone yeah. talked about processing, yeah. talked about processing mm -hmm. feeling, you yeah. know, what you were talking about it, Sarah, about mm -hmm. being able to process. And when there's a lot of that, mm -hmm. you know, it, it makes it more difficult, yeah. Yeah. right? Yeah. So asking God to make those things clear, so, yeah. Yeah. my friends, uh -huh. my friends who know me, Nicole, where have you been? Because I tend to like shut <laughs> down, yeah. too. Yeah. and then all of a sudden I'm not communicating with anybody, yeah. Yeah. you know, yeah. and I'm like, That's dinner, me. what, and we have to eat dinner every day? Yeah. Like, <laughs> what? What's wrong? Sometimes they like yeah. go yeah. out the window, yeah. you know? Yeah. So all of the stuff that we've been talking about really is so so important um, to get through to get through that um, th those emotions and and figuring out okay how do I do this but it's okay to feel things yeah. you know but how can I keep moving forward you yeah. know when when things aren't going my way or there's changes that I don't um, have control over right now yeah. mm -hmm. yeah. just, just, just so like I think for me like change can be I think it takes me a while to adjust. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, I, I I can have my mind stuck on one thing mm -hmm. and like um if it starts to change, I'm like, I'm not it's I'm not changing yet. Like yeah. I'm yeah. not ready. <laughs> like, like, this thing is <laughs> and you're like, still I'll here. do some things a certain way. And yeah. I'm like, okay, like I think I'm learning now, like not even just like change happening in my life, but people change. Yeah. yeah, you know, I, I noticed yeah. that like even like my friends and people in my life are changing, mm -hmm. like, you know. Yeah. And um, like I, I am more of a go with the flow. Mm -hmm. My sister's actually more like me, she's like very particular. Mm -hmm. So, um, so me like I'm not always like I'm not a, I'm not always prepared for it. Yeah. Um, but like I'm just like okay, like I'll see it. I'm like that's different. Okay. But it, it, it will take a while for me to understand, like, no, things are changing. That's why it's different. Yeah. You know, yeah. people are changing around you. That's right. why they're like, they don't do this anymore. They're not like this anymore, you right. know? Because right. um, I'm someone that likes to, like, I just don't always like, oh, you just like, why do I like to do it? But I learned that, like, you know, like, you know, as with time, people change, and, like, yeah. you, like, have to adjust as well. Mm -hmm. um, that's been difficult for me. Like, there's been a lot of change in my life this year alone. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. yeah. Like, is beautiful. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. Yeah. But it's hard. Embracing it. Learning to. Learning to. And you know what they say? Uh, uh, women are like spaghetti. 
Oh, I know. Oh, and then we get out there. Oh, we're we're the top 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 I know. <laughs> it touches everything. You know, oh. it's all over. It touches the it's sauce. Sticky. Touches, yeah. yeah, it's sticky. Okay. It's not an individual uh, 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 noodle. Mm -hmm. It's all intertwined. Oh, okay. Right? Right. And yeah. even as we yeah. women mm -hmm. uh, are living and learning to navigate ourselves, identify ourselves, where we are trying to enjoy the space we're in, yeah. we are intertwined with others. Yeah. And then if you have your children, they are going through their own changes and all. So Ooh. it's amazing. And it makes me think, oh, I need God. Oh, yeah. 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 I just need God. And uh, uh, I'm just so thankful for all of us yeah. that you came. Yeah. You yeah. thank you my invitation. <laughs> 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 And then I thought, you know what? Um, just uh, this roundtable conversation. Uh, as I said, I thoroughly enjoyed each moment. Dr. Patty, I love calling you Dr. Patty. <laughs> Nicole, with your psychology and all that amazing thing, my learned friend. <laughs> so much talent. But it's not just even that, it's just that we can be open with one another. Right? Yeah, that's yeah. true. And I thought, yeah. you know, this pandemic, the whole world has been changed mm -hmm. by the pandemic and we're living in such uncertain times. And I'm thankful that God never changes right. like the shifting shadows. Right. Yeah. And so to him, we shall look to mm -hmm. and see what he says uh, on how to face uncertainty. Mm -hmm. And I shall read Psalm 121, if you could turn with me to Psalm 121. And it says this, um, because it starts with uh, a, a very pertinent question for you and I to ask ourselves and to answer. And it says this, I lift my eyes to the hills. Where does my help come from? Mm -hmm. My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. He will not let your foot slip. He who watches over you will not slumber. Indeed, he who watches over you, Israel, will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord watches over you. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun will not harm you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all harm. He will watch over your life. Amen. The Lord will watch over your coming and your going, both now and forevermore. Amen. And God says this so also. Be. I will be this if you turn toward me. Isaiah 42. Yeah. Isaiah 42. It says this. Isaiah 42 from verse 16. It says, I will lead the blind by the ways they have not known. Along unfamiliar paths, I will guide them. I will turn the darkness into light before them and make the rough places smooth. These things, these are the things I will do. I will not forsake them. Amen. Amen. And finally, Isaiah 46, one of my favorite passages, God says, he is with you for the long haul. Amen. All the way to the very end. That's right. Now, turn with me to Isaiah 46. From verse 3, I love this passage. He says, I'm with you for the long haul. He says, you, whom I have upheld since you were conceived and have carried you since your birth. That's right. Mm -hmm. Even to your old age and gray hairs, I am he who will sustain you, and I will sustain you, and I will rescue you. Yes. So Amen. let us hold on Amen. to God, yes. especially in these uncertain times, yes. because he's mighty and faithful. Amen? Amen. Amen. So thank you again. Thank you so much for spending. Thank you so much for spending this time together. I loved each moment. Damaris, I encourage each and every one of you. I encourage each and every one of you at home and us together to keep gathering together as yeah. friends yeah. and have these couch conversations. They're so nourishing. They just strengthen yeah. us and let us trust and hold on to God. Especially, like I said earlier on, in these challenging times and uncertain times, we have a God who yes, desires what's best for us, yes. our life and our welfare. We have a God who not only has the wisdom to plan it, 
but a God who does have the power to achieve it. And you know, in Jeremiah 29, he says, I know. You refer to this passage, Matt. He says, I know the plans I have for you. So let us trust in his word toward us. For he's given us his word and promise. And we are surely and truly most favored. Let God in into your transitions and the spaces in between. God bless you and take care of yourself. And thank you once again for joining us. And we shall close with prayer. And Farah will leave us in prayer. Thank you, Farah. God bless you. <laughs> Hi, ladies. Um, let's bow our head in prayer. Um, holy and righteous Father, God who lives, God who reigns. Um, thank you so much for being amazing. Thank you so much for the transitions you put us through because to be transitioning means that we are alive, means that we can feel, means that we are in your presence, God. Father, I pray that as you transition us through our different phases, through our different plans, God, that um, we get closer to you, that it is deliberate, it is um, planned that we get closer to you, God. I pray that um, you're with those who are in the hospital, God, you are those who are listening in the hospital, my friends, I know who they are. Um, God, I pray that you are with those um, who, we, who are in mourning, who, who have lost, who have transitioned in that way. Um, God, I pray for those who are um, transitioning through depression and through so many different things. I pray, God, that you help us to be united, to be encouraging to one another, to help one another to do greater things to your glory, God, because without you, we can't survive the transitions without you we can't do anything um the only reason why we are alive and why we are functioning is because of you and so we surrender everything to you god thank you so much for listening to us um thank you for being gracious and kind we love you very very much it is in jesus name we pray have a great day guys uh and let's just chat and god bless you and have a fantastic weekend. You take care. Thank you so much. Thank you, Thank you. <laughs> for being here with us. Mm -hmm.